So what is ISO and why do we still use this terminology in the digital age? Great result and a bit of a factual one today and because I've been doing quite a bit about ISO and I was asked a bit of a question of why do we still use the term ISO when that was actually about film. So let's discuss that shall we. So ISO stands for International Standards Organisation. It's carried over from the film days when film was rated by the said organisation to ensure the consistency amongst the film manufacturers and as a standard for calibrating light meters. Films had a box speed. Now this was actually written on the packaging and was set on the camera or the light meter. The actual sensitivity of the film was often slightly higher or lower than the box speed. If you knew the actual sensitivity of that the film was, you could adjust the exposure to get the best exposure, the finest grain and image quality the film actually offered. You could also raise or lower the ISO on the camera which would be corrected by lengthening or shortening the development time. This is also known as pushing or pulling. Pushing the ISO would create more grain during the process due to the chemical reaction actually on the film. Now when digital cameras came along, the process of capturing light changed uh, as it was no longer a chemical process, but an electronic one. However, so as not to alienate photographers from what they already knew, they adopted and adapted the method of metering light from the film cameras. Just as a roll of film only had one ISO rating for the light sensitivity, which couldn't be altered mid-roll, a digital sensor could only have one as well, which is the base ISO. All other speeds were achieved by increasing the amount of current sent to the sensor, also known as boosting the signal to noise ratio. This is also known as gain, a term that was used in videography way before still digital cameras. As I previously said, the camera makers wanted to retain the terminology from the film cameras. Whereas film has a pleasant increase in grain, the size of the silver halide particles, when the ISO was increased, digital sensors have a fixed pattern of pixels. So as the signal is boosted, the noise increases, giving that washed out, slightly fuzzy look that we're all pretty familiar with. Noise and grain are definitely not the same thing. As sensor and processor technology advances, the signal to noise levels are pretty much being improved, making clearer images at the higher ISOs. Modern software for post-processing has also been able to reduce the perception of noise in the images. Whether or not it actually improves image quality is still pretty much debatable, but the results are still pretty much impressive. So after all that, photographers love to use the base ISO because it gives the camera's optimal image quality. Just because you can boost the ISO, the gain, it doesn't mean you should. A good photographer will try to increase or find more light. Obviously this can be done in different ways by opening up your aperture or slowing down that shutter speed. And if that fails, adding more light before you even try to increase that ISO. In many documentary and photojournalistic situations, adding more light is just simply not possible. So boosting the ISO is going to be the only option because in those situations, the image content is more important than image quality. The important thing to know when boosting the ISO is when not to rather than crank it up because you don't have the knowledge or the experience to do otherwise. So basically in a nutshell, the ISO or the terminology ISO has stayed just to not confuse photographers. <clears throat> I also done a little bit about auto ISO. Uh, the good, the bad and the ugly. You might want to probably check that one out. I'll leave a link in the description or uh, something up above. And uh, you might find that one interesting too. 
So until the next time, thanks for joining this one and take care, stay safe. We'll see you soon.